Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Previously, Phoenix Wright leveled an accusation against Christoph Gavin, Apollo's mentor. Apparently, Phoenix believes that Christoph is the one who murdered Shady Smith. Phoenix says that Christoph was there that night at the Borscht Bowl Club, and... The proof is that apparently Kristoff knew what the colors of the cards were before it was brought up in the trial. So, yeah, now uh, Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber, so let's just move right along here and see what the hell happens. Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Who is this? Oh, you're you're the lady in the in the locket. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait just one second. That hair color. Phoenix has black hair. Maya has black hair. That's. This lady has has brown hair. You know who also had brown hair? Will Powers. No, uh, um, Mia Fey. Yeah. Ooh, Phoenix, you dog. <laughs> oh man. Wait. So, are you telling me Phoenix had a daughter throughout the entire trilogy? What the hell? Okay, wait, I'm, I'm going to withhold judgment until we actually learn, all right? Uh-huh, what? Uh, hello, sir. Please, pick a card. Wh what? Uh, wh what's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card. The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. An ace. Where do I remember that card from? Yet in the court record, we pointed this out that there was actually three kings, not three aces. So, this is an extra ace of spades, and the real ace of spades belonged in Phoenix's hand. Huh. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. The missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw. The truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. Yep, that's... Yeah, that's... That's Phoenix and Mia's daughter. So, retroactively, this makes Phoenix an awful parent? Hello? Throughout the entire trilogy, not one thought is spared for his own daughter. Not when Mia died. Not when Phoenix was falling to his death. And this Fae was not brought up at all in all the Fae shenaniganry between Maya and Pearl and, um, what's-her-face with the stupid hair. Uh, this is a ridiculous retcon. <laughs> but I'm, I'm here for it. 
This blood-stained card is my trump card for finding the truth? Okay. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl, I'd seen her recently. But where? That's when I made the connection. She's wearing pink in the past. Bloody Ace added to the court record. Two forty five PM The day draws long. Um let's have a look. Let's have a look. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. And the back? Red. It got swapped out. It was supposed to be red. It was supposed to be in his hand. Someone sabotaged him. Maybe Shady's... Well, maybe Olga's story about Shady yelling at her about being... messing up. Maybe that was true? Okay. Huh. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Mm, yes, Your Honor. Um, will Mr. Um, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this farce necessary, Your Honor? Believe me, far stranger things have gone on in this courtroom. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Oh, yeah. <sighs> Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. What you doing? What you think you're doing? You don't have a license. <laughs> I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. M Mr. Wright. What do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off, except for that one time. That one time. Being the instant he was hit. Oh! When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to be on the scene of the crime. At the time of the crime. In other words, you'd have to be the real killer, is what you're trying to say. Not bad, Apollo. <laughs> oh man, he's doing the anime shades thing with the light reflecting. Oh man, he's totally a villain. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally! You may begin your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? That fateful night. 
The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. Ah, it's about time that got brought up. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and right, holding a bottle in his hand. How he appears in the photo was with a hat on! I sensed that was not the place for me to be at the time, and so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. So, you witnessed the murder. For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> the rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me. So I returned to the club. That man, you mean Mr. Smith. He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then you knew the true nature of your client's job. Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. The little window? You mean the one used to keep watch on the stairs? I would offer such a narrow view. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The Black Marketeers used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes. What if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their match. Bad form, to say the least. Hmm. So far, everything he's saying makes sense. It must have been right after the murder took place. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really, no need to shout, Justice. Irk. I was just getting to that part in my testimony. Ah, there he is. The coolest defense in the West we know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, some things never change. I was afraid you changed too, right? But you haven't you and that overbearing personality of yours. With friends like these, who needs enemies? <laughs> the victim was dead, 
as he appears in the photo. By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene. Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Ah, uh, okay, I don't think I can poke a hole in this then. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. Those are the only three at the scene of the crime? Yes, as far as I saw at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was a defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But why have you talked to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Hmm. There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice. I just said I saw no one. Not a soul. But, but that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah, yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question, then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? Hmm? Perhaps you can show a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace? Right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Yeah. It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. You're not supposed to just spring evidence out of nowhere, Apollo, that in real life that would, it would be inadmissible. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? The fifth ace had blood on it. Uh, this one. Take that! Take that! Take that? Okay. <laughs> My reason is, uh, this. Is that an ace? Why, why it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. What? What? Whoa, his composure broke. This is insane. Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? Oh, good to see the judge was paying attention. In inconceivable. How could you? What are you doing with that card? Oh, man. He just admit he knows about it. Uh, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock in trade, after all. N no! Impossible! Unacceptable! The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? 
I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real car from the crime scene. The real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. Objection. Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right, regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. <laughs> What's important now is that I've answered your question. He's taking the hit on purpose. What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection. This is... This is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Objection. Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. Well, they are just really going strong with the, with the late 2000 memes. Oh, jeez. Actually, no, people still say base today. Uh, what? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Yes? Try picturing the scene of the crime in your head. Oh... 3D! Oh! Cool. <laughs> Murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped the card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Gavin, um, given that there was a drop of blood on the card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit. The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? I want to say the victim. The victim was laying with his head tilted back. The blood was flowing back over the back of his head. It should be dripping behind him on like the chair or the floor behind him. How could the blood drip onto the cards which were laying on the table in front of him? I'm gonna go with this one. Well... Isn't it the victim's position that's a problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. Yes, nailed it. You'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not under the table in front of him. Oh. Take a look at the photo again. Any blood in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. 
Why, that's right. So, what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. Swivel chairs? Oh man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Oh. oh. Rotate. The chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. 3D. So we have to assume that, oh, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. I can read that. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing as seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take it the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. Uh, again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses whose location creates a contradiction if the victim was facing away. The killer, because the bottle struck the front of his head. Right? Either that, or Gavin's um, point of view, because he was looking in and couldn't see the bald head from this angle. Maybe... No, he'd probably see the side. I think it's a killer's. The killer could not strike the forehead from here. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of the game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. Well, what? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here... Where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. Oh, what? Uh, but... There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry, let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing toward the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Was the cabinet moved? Um, they'd have to be standing here. The, the killer had to be standing, well, uh, here. You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Oh. I didn't... Oh, okay. Oh! Oh, oh wait! I think... No! Oh, okay, I thought... I thought... Oh! Okay. <laughs> I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? Huh? It's simple logic, really. Let's take a look at the photo. Maybe it would make sense for it to be moved. It would hide the exposed brick. Huh. 
Huh. If this was the only place a killer could have been standing, then that means that, at the very moment of the crime... Oh, wait, I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there! What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation, right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a, suge a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Bailiff, send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Uh, Your Honor? What? There is one more thing you should, your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm? Mm, yes, I, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. Oh, man. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the scene of the crime, at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Don't mind if I do. Boop. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was a problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been as shown here. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? What is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Kristoff couldn't see through the window. Uh-huh. Oh, dang! Notice something, Napolo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim? The killer? The witness? The second witness? Which indicator in this diagram contradicts what we know about the crime? Nail? Meet Coffin. Um, about this cupboard. Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would never... W would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Oh... That's right, someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What? What did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was while the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court exactly where did you witness the crime scene from? Excuse me, Your Honor. Order! This is a court of law and I will have order. We, we just now received word from an investigative team at the Borscht Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard and the hideout, Your Honor. Oh! And what did they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there is a secret passage behind it. What? Ah, yes. I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings-on. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? 
The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops. And enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked and the victim's hat was only off his head for the few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin, come on, say something. Hmm. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with Destiny. There he crouched, hidden in his secret passageway behind the cupboard, holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. What? Why did you do that? Wait, here, I'll get help. Oh, that was Phoenix then. Miss Olga Orly was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But his time was soon to come. Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops, leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from his secret passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. <laughs> Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne? Yerk! Uh, yes, Your Honor? The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Gwark. Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest. Immediately. Objection. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. One last play, huh? Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. 
Uh, illegal evidence? Objection. Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking. How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Er, actually, yes. The fingerprints on the bottle were, um, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The courts, in this case, demand an explanation. I can give only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is, a, is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor? Mmm. Ah, see how the caught fish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Uh, yes? Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Uh, yeah, j just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... Gulp. To pick it up off the floor? Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. Oh, it's so obvious. He grabbed it from the box. That's the only angle you could pick it up from. He leaned down to pick... Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um, how about you just say the answer in plain words? It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions indeed. Well, Mr. Justice? Mr. Gavin said that the court and this case demand an explanation. Don't worry. Justice won't leave until justice is done. At least he's leaning into his name. Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? It's this one. <sighs> it's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that battle on the floor, next to your chair. Excuse me? On the floor? Yes. Now, reach down and pick it up. Without getting out of your chair. Ah! See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. With your fingers upside down. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here, playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then too. Basically, you use the bottle on the table to do the deed. Then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from the, under the piano, and you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. Order, order, order. What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic of misdirection. What? What? You claim that I switched the bottle? Where is your proof? But proof? Well, that's a. Uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. 
I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Objection! I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I requested an additional investigation? Uh, yes, I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. Humph. What are you saying? Are you going to dust that for fingerprints too? I would be surprised if any were on that but this, but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say, Apollo. Yes? Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright, take that bottle and solve um, solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle. Okay. Rotate, ro rotate the old baby. There's something inside the bottle. The Five of Hearts. Oh, oh, what's this? Uh, that card, it can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. I thought she was nice. Er, Miss Olga Orly? Yes, our little swindling uh, Devochka. That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand just like he was supposed to. Then Mr. Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. W wait. This isn't... You're telling me that this is... The planted card you disposed of? The one you mentioned in the piece of testimony? I happened to put my hand in my pocket. And found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card. Before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. The Five of Hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped, and the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Christoph Gavin! I like the implication that the discarded bowl of lobster bisque was just laying there the entire time. <laughs> that is all. Got him. Wow. Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge? For this events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? Oh. My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have those little ta- uh, ta- Tay, uh, Tay, right? What the hell's that? This, this is insane. What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? <laughs> uh, 
I believe this time we've finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Um, none that we know of. Yo. What the hell could his motive be? What the hell? Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler. An odd profession to be sure, and that's all we know about him. I'll arrange a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright? Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me? A dark time is coming for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own court system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright. Our work lies ahead of us. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds a defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not guilty! Wait, is Gumshoe still spreading the confetti? That's canon, you know. Gumshoe was the one doing the confetti every time. Is he here, in the crowd? Court is adjourned. Wow. Okay, this has to come up. Phoenix's disbarment seven years ago, Gavin being there, and some sort of relation with Shady Smith, that has to come up in a future case. It has to. Thanks, Apollo. You came through, just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. Gav... the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too, today, didn't you? Your... ability. Ability? Yes. A sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment of the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's true. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? What, what was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer? Right. Today was full of questions without answers. Most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have had to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Uh-huh. Oh, wait. You don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Was it around Shady's neck? That reminds me, I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Give me a name. Your daughter, right? That's right. 
she's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Uh-huh. I took this off his neck the, the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury! You testified! You said that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. All he said that was that his daughter's photo was inside. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. So, Shady Smith owned a locket with the photo of Phoenix's daughter in it. What? Why? Wait, but then, why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside it? Sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Uh, speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices, after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo. Yes? How about coming to work for me? Huh? You mean, at the Wright & Company Law Offices? I mean... There's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but... Didn't you... You're not a... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. That legendary trial. And at the middle of it all was one man, Phoenix Wright. The case reached its sad conclusion, and he left law for good. Maybe he wasn't disbarred. Maybe he gave it up willingly. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Did you notice in today's trial? There's a single piece of forged evidence. F forged evidence? What are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Uh, uh... What? Um, one piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. That one. You mean this, don't you? I got this from your, um, your daughter, Mr. Wright. Yes, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in its place, luckily for us. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. My verdict was already handed down. Seven years ago. Then... You really... Yes, I forged this card. Oh my god. 
one look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But... You can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney! Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true? Seven years ago! None of that matters much now, does it? I punched him. It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My officer's address. Drop in if you like. Mr. Wright. Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling, take that next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. Oh my god. That is freaking fascinating. Holy shit. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And, at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. Damn! Turnabout Corner, okay. Yeah, let's drop a save. Ooh. Well... Wow, okay. Phoenix Wright produced forged evidence seven years ago. He did a bad. He was disbarred. His right as an attorney was stripped from him. What the hell, Phoenix? I don't want to believe he did it willingly, but Phoenix made no other pretenses about it. And here, he actually did forge evidence for real. He had his, and he brought his daughter into it. He brought his innocent daughter into it. What the hell, Phoenix? Okay, dude, this bad end, screwed up, punished Phoenix is fascinating. Of all the ways they could have taken his character into the future, this is the best. They have made Phoenix into such an interesting, fascinating person. We knew him as such a dweeby goody two-shoes, but this, this is amazing. What the hell, Phoenix? Wow. And despite carrying out such miscarriages of justice, he seems so interested in Apollo, in guiding the next generation. Phoenix sees himself in Apollo. He sees potential. And he wants to guide Apollo. That in itself is a contradiction, isn't it? And Phoenix seems so disenfranchised with the court of law. I mean, as he should be, the court system in this universe is hellish. Like, my god, we all know how horrible it is. And yet, Phoenix senses that it's about to get much, much worse. What a mysterious man. Well, um... <laughs> that'll do it for now, I suppose. 
Uh, I hope you'll join me next time for the second case, Turnabout Corner. Yeah, I am fully expecting that Phoenix's daughter, name still unknown, will be Apollo's assistant, the Maya to his Phoenix, as it were. Um, so there's no way that daughter isn't the daughter of Mia Fey, right? That, that has to be Mia's daughter, Phoenix and Mia. They weren't married, were they? Have the child out of wedlock? I mean, nothing wrong with that. But it's just interesting to think about. Well, anyway, this has gone on long enough. So, I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, catch you next time. So, until then, please take care. <laughs>